Hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today's job we have a front A-frame of a 740 articulating dump truck. On a 740 dump truck there are three A-frames. There are two mounted on the rear of the machine with the two rear diffs and there is one mounted on the front with the front diff. So the way it is connected to the dump truck, there is a pin and a bearing that go down through this hole and that is what gives it its oscillation movement so it can freely move. And then this end is mounted to the diff of the machine. And you might remember from a previous video where we did a disassembly and reassembly of a 740 front strut. To give you an idea on where the front struts are mounted, once the diff is bolted onto the A-frame, the front strut would be about here on the machine. The customers brought it in because the main pivot point has worn out. It's one of those parts on a machine that is sooner or later going to wear out because the bearing is so much harder than the parent material that the bearing is in and the amount of movement these do when they're in operation sooner or later they're going to wear out there's no other damage to it it's not severely worn out where it's been totally chopped out and destroyed it's actually still in pretty good shape so it'll be a quick easy job to set up a line borer bore that out put a new layer of material in and cut it back to spec so we're going to get started on that What I'm going to do, I'm going to tack a trestle to the A-frame. I don't want this to fall over. It is quite heavy. And if you were to try and hang a line bore off this, it would all end up on the ground and you would break something. I have seen it happen once before to another line bore for another company I was working for. Same sort of job, put a line bore on it, turned his back and the whole thing fell ass overhead and it damaged his line bore to the point it could not be repaired. So to avoid such problems, do things as safe as possible, line borers are not cheap. Just tacking this to a trestle will stop any chances of this thing falling over. As you can see in the hole now, there is a lip that the bearing has worn and it is all the way around it. So the customer did really well to catch this because after it gets to this point, the bearing will then start to break down and after it starts to fall to bits, it just trashes the end of the of the A-frames, it just rips them apart. The bearing is actually tight on this outer lip here, you can't push it in. Well, you, you could probably hammer that into place, but once it gets past that first lip, it falls into that bit of a recess that the old bearing has worn and it will just flop around. So rather than just throw a new bearing in that and send it on its way, they're going to repair it correctly and put a new bearing in it. One of the interesting things about a lot of the spherical bearings that are out there on the market, you do have some bearings that have a completely split cage. So you can see on this bearing here, there are two points where it has been chiseled and then broken into two. And that way the two halves always go back perfectly together because they weren't cut or machined. If you were to try and put them in the wrong way, nothing will fit. So they only go the one way. But the bearing we have here, it is a single split bearing. It has one little split here. So it always makes me wonder how they got this part of the bearing back inside its case and made it look that good, considering how hard this material is. In my years of experience in earth moving repair, when you're doing bearing areas like this, it is always best to go with genuine bearings. The genuine bearings are a much higher quality, they last longer, you don't have to do the repair again in a couple of thousand hours time. If you can afford to, put genuine parts back in it. It might be a little bit more expensive today, but it will save you a lot in the long run.
forward, see? That's a sturdy, it's not going to fall over. Right, so we're about to start welding that bore we've just cut out. The wire I'm going to be using is ER70S6 in a 0.9. This is a bronze coated wire, not a copper coated wire. I prefer this over conventional wires because it has a lot less spatter in it and it just welds really nicely, leaves a nice clean layer and there's not a great deal of spatter gets caught in the shroud. Backing that up, we'll be using Argo Shield Universal, which is 80% argon, 10% CO2, and 10% oxygen. So the oxygen really helps with keeping that weld really hot and allowing everything to wet in. So it keeps it like a puddle, and everything just flows really, really well. So I'll be using that at 19 volts, four and a half meters of wire a minute. And that seems to be the perfect setup with a big machine like this to bore weld something like that.
Go. Come on. The welding is all cooled off now. It's been cooling for the last two and a half hours. Now that it's nice and cool, we're gonna get into boring it. Righto guys, so I've done my first roughing cut and I've run into a bit of a problem which I knew this was coming. I don't have a great deal of room in here because the bore that I'm working on is actually sunk inside the A-frame. So it is quite difficult to get a measurement in order to advance the tool for its final cut. The reason I set it up like this is the shorter the bolts that we weld onto the job, this machine is a lot more rigid when the bolts are very, very short. So if I was to go and try and use longer bolts here, you'll actually see the machine starting to bounce while it's working. The bolts I'm using here to fix the bearing blocks to the job, they are 14mm in diameter and 50mm long. So if I was to try and make this easier to work on and use an extra long bolt, it'd have to be about 130mm and that's just too much there's just not enough support, it's not rigid enough to do what I'm trying to do. You take the good with the bad and you sort of put up with it. So what I usually do in a situation like this is I will take the tool holder off altogether, I will then take the measurement with the snap gauge and I will then reset that tool out here on the other end of the bar and then I will put it back in place and take the final cut. This is just one of those things you run into when you're a line borer. We have one mil to come out. Righto guys, so I have got one mil to come out of the ID of the area we're boring at the moment for the crush spec on the bearing. What I've done is I've advanced the tool half a mil, that's the way this setup works. Half a mil here equals a complete mil in there. So we've got that done, let's get it set back up, finish this hole off.
Right, guys, we're just about ready to freeze fit our new bearing into the A-frame. Some of you may have noticed I did not machine in a grease groove inside the bore, and that is because the bearing has a grease groove on it already. The OEMs generally, when they do a part number upgrade, or they do a variant of a bush or a bearing, the upgraded part number will take you to the latest thing that has been designed. So in this case, the bushing now has the grease groove on it not the bore of the A-frame. So I've just marked where the split is in the outer cage of the bearing. And the reason I do that is I don't wanna put that split on the load point when this machine will be in operation. So you don't want them at the front, you don't want them at the back, because when the machine is working, 
those are the load points. So you wanna try and put this off to the side at about three or nine o'clock. It just helps prolong the life of the component. Helps melt the ice so you don't get any rust. Right, guys, so everything went exactly to plan. The bush went in, it didn't lock up nothing. At the end of the machining, we actually put a 0.2 crush onto the bearing, so that's about 8 thou. Um, the tighter we can get these bearings without going extreme, the longer they're going to last. That there is about as tight as you'd like to get a bearing like that, and everything went exactly to plan. So this one's done, and thanks for watching. <laughs> How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today's job we have a front A from... <laughs> Fuck. First, first take, right. here we go. Right, so, oh, where are we starting from? So it mounts at the... Fuck. Right, so it mounts on the front of... Oh, fuck. Be safe with your gear, don't mess it up. Right. <laughs> you were so random one-liners. <laughs> okay. Now that that's cool enough, we're going to get into... Oh, cool enough. You found the eye was cool enough. <laughs> Fuck. Let's get it set back up, finish this hole off. <laughs> Does that sound bad? <laughs> right, guys, so all that went exactly to plan. Everything just went... Oh, to me. plan. Right. <laughs> At the end of the machining... Oh, I just bit my tongue. My God! God. Jesus! You have tight knees. You have <clears throat> so, that, they... So it, it keeps it a lot. And after that happens, it just chops the A-frame. So you want to try and put them off. <sighs> now that it's nice and cool, we're going to get into boring it. Oh, that was just in time. Fuck off, Crane. <laughs> How dare you. That's it, shit. get in there to get the screw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that won't crack. Mm. <laughs> sure. Hang on, I want to try something. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Is that alright? Good boy. Oh, look at Muddy. Good chicken. Ah, what you got? Oh. <laughs> I slipped over. Ugh.